Hello, everybody, and welcome to a much more docile version of Quest for Creative. We are on episode 19, and I am medicated. Yes, I had my final wisdom tooth removed yesterday, and it hurt quite a bit, but I like what the dentist did. Um, the wisdom tooth was in the bone still, the same as it was on the other side, so instead of messing around with it, trying to get it out you know, cleanly without overly damaging they just said screw it and drill it out i love it it took like 10 minutes it was great i was of course uh uh, uh i had a, i of course had local anesthetic at the time so i wasn't exactly feeling anything so that's probably a positive there anyways uh so yes i'm medicated so this is going to be more of a talky style episode than a doing style episode I'm basically just going to be, it's going to be kind of like a clip show, and I kind of apologize for it, but uh, there's no way that I could, you know, it, it's hard for me to plan out things right now because of, you know, the medication is slowing my brain a bit, uh, so I couldn't do anything overly complex, uh, at least nothing that I can put together well enough to record an episode of, but... I didn't want to not record an episode today because I didn't record one yesterday, and I know that if I just kind of let myself go for a little while, it'll just slow to a stop, and then it'll be two months later, and I hadn't recorded anything. So I do want to get episodes out. I do want to keep going uh, just because, yeah, I really like doing it. I don't want to stop again. Um, so anyways, uh, yes, um, in the last episode... We did the laser drill here, this guy. And uh, I said that I might set up one of the uh, thermal expansion glitch generators. And I did. Uh, since the uh, uh, drill pre-chargers can only input 5,000 RF per tick, you only need two resident energy cells because they output at 10,000 RF per tick. So 10,000 split into two, that's 5,000. Get another one, there you go, boom, done. The drill is running max. Okay, and as you can see, I took the output of the system from its double wide chest and put it in here. And there's a reason for that. And that is that in the two days that I've had it running, um, it's kind of gone a little nuts. I mean, just look at the diamonds. I'm working on the ninth stack of diamond right now. Holy crap. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, it, if you can set it up and get it powered at speed, it kind of goes insane how fast this stuff generates, um, and I took all the reds, or the, the Project Red, I keep wanting to call it Red Power, but that's the old one, this is the new one, it's Project Red, uh, I took all the Project Red stuff and I connected it all up to the infinite places, so like, uh, the ores here, the saplings over there, the uh, blocks of metal from the that thing over there that we never did name, and then the lockers of infinity. They're all connected together so that I can see how everything's going just from a central area. And we can see we're actually doing really, really good. I mean, 724 lead ore blocks, 595 silver ore blocks. Um... 33 ferrous ore, but that's because I wanted to get more tesseracts and more of these resident energy cells. Uh, so I had to use a whole bunch of ferrous ores, uh, so they're not accurate. I do, however, have written down all of the numbers from yesterday. Um, after I got home from the, the dentists and I realized there was no way in hell I was going to be recording yesterday because I was afraid to even open my mouth. I'm not joking. It's not that I was worried about like bleeding out or anything like that. No, they do a damn good job stitching me up and there that wasn't a problem. The problem was half my face was still numb for several hours afterwards and I was worried about biting off my tongue. Yeah, so I I did, I didn't eat yesterday, not until way late, and I regretted that this morning, I'll tell you that much. Um, but that's what I did. I sat there and I counted all of the ores that I got, and I put them in a list, uh, which 
I guess I could share out. Um, if I remember, it'll be in the description of this video. Um, it's just a Google spreadsheet document that I created that shows all of the ores that this thing created, all 25 ores, and the just the number I got, you know, how many I got, like uh, the least that I, or the least common that I got from this setup is malachite. And I got uh, 89 total ores from that. Yes, the least, the lowest number I got was 89, over a stack, almost a stack and a half. The most common, as would be kind of expected, is coal with 523. Now, again, keep in mind, this was like letting this system run for only 24 hours. So I had uh, one of the poppet shelves up there and just let it run overnight just just to see what would happen and that's what happened holy crap that is insane um so yeah we got a whole bunch of stuff including let's see nether quartz both of the nether ores we got we got this one let's see if i can find it in the system i ah, screw it i'll do it right here uh can i just see it right now no we have cheese ore from Galacticraft, which I thought was pretty sweet. Um, go away. Thank you. I, I'm not sure what cheese ore can do yet. I haven't looked into it. Um, but yeah, I thought that was pretty cool that we actually get Galacticraft cheese ore. You have to go to... Can you get that on... Yeah, you can get that on the moon. You have to go to the freaking moon to get cheese in this game, which is hilarious. Um, so yeah, I did all that. I put this all together and now I can see all of the stuff that are in the infinity lockers. Well, almost all the stuff. There's one thing that's not in there and that's because it doesn't connect properly to the red pro project red pipes. Uh, so we can at least get an idea of what we have. Um, so we have seven rows. No. Yeah. Seven rows here and 11 columns here. So that makes 77 different items here along with these ones. So that's 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87. 87 infinite items, though the Rowan berries may not count because it would appear that uh, they only drop if the leaves despawn, not if they're harvested. Because uh, that's been sitting on 17 for like a week now. So I don't think that the Rowan berries count. Still, that's a lot that we have. Uh, the only one that I'm not counting in this system is the uh, experience, uh, the, the, the essence berries over here, because they're in the deep storage unit. Uh, you can connect the deep storage unit to the Project Red pipes, but it will only ever show 64. It will never show this number here because uh, from what I can see, from what I'm understanding, these two are just input and this it this would be considered storage. Everything else would be like uh, stored in the metadata probably of this block. And that's how we get this number here. So it's not actually storing all of those essence berries. It's just making the essence berries disappear and adding to a number. So not, not a problem. It works for me. I'm quite content with it. It just doesn't work with the Project Red pipes. So I probably won't be using the deep storage units all that often for that reason. Though it would be kind of nice to keep using them. Um, what else have I done? Um... But hang on, I have a list of crap. Um, okay, I wanted to say this. Uh, you remember how I was saying about how my server kept crashing? Like every day it would be crashed and I'd have to shut down the server and restart the server and log in and hope it didn't crash again instantaneously. I think, I think, I think, I figured out what's going on. I don't know why this is happening, but it's because of these tree farms here. All three of those tree farms? Um, I have I, I have them off right now because I have uh, everything being powered from the solar panels now. So I have the tree farms turned off. Um, but when I... I had them on two days ago. 
and the server crashed. But before that, I had them turned off for several days and the server didn't crash at once, not once, had no problems whatsoever. So they were on, crashes, turned them off, doesn't crash, turned them back on, they crash. So it appears my tree farms here crash the server. So fair warning, the tree farms crash the server. Don't know why. Doesn't give me an error message, so I have no no hints whatsoever at what the problem is. Um, so, yeah. However, I mean, I don't need power generation that way anymore. I have these, so it, I mean, it works. It's all good. Uh, that tree farm has been running constantly ever since I had that plug, or I created it. And it seems to work fine. It hasn't caused any problems on the server. Doesn't cause any lag. It's just those ones over there that cause the lag. Probably from having all of them running simultaneously is probably what causes it. Can't say that for 100% sure. Uh, let's see, what else? Ah, the, yes. Um, I was playing with this earlier today. The crafting pipes for Project Red. Um, I was mildly curious if possibly they had fixed it and I didn't know about it, but I did play with the crafting pipes and the crafting chips, um, and I know how to make them work, because I actually succeeded doing it, but uh, I cannot make the system I want to make. What I wanted to do, uh, as we can see in all of these, we have the ores. Okay, so we have the ferrous ore, we have the lead ore, we have the silver ore, but we don't have the lead or the silver or any topaz or peridot. What I would have to do would be to pull these out and then take care of them myself, do it manually. So what I wanted to do was add uh, redstone furnaces and pulverizers to here and then have the crafting pipes take care of that for me. So if I needed the peridot, I would just go one peridot, enter, and it would send out the peridot ore into the pulverizer. It would give me uh, the peridot, the one peridot I wanted, the other one would go back into storage, which I would have to set up, but not actually needed right now. Uh, but it would do it all automatically. If I wanted gold ore, it would send the system through the pulverizer and then into the redstone furnace and then I would get what I wanted and the rest would go back into storage and I know how to do that I got it to work uh, in single player mode once uh, and then I got it to work here on the server once but the second I add the second one and the second I try to get it to actually do something the client crashes the server doesn't crash but the client does and then the, it never actually finishes. Um, which, yeah, I had the chunk loader running there. So, yeah, it never did anything. And it was... I was testing it in the single-player world. Do you know that uh, the, 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 the creative tutorial that I went to when I was showing you off the glitch here? And I showed you that big generator with all the resonant energy cells and everything? The gl giant glitch generator I created? Uh, yeah, that world is gone now, thanks to that. Um, that uh, glitch crashed that world, and it's now gone. It's completely corrupt, uh, so that kind of sucks. I really, really, really want the crafting pipes to work. Oh, I love them. I love that idea. It is a great, great idea. But, uh, yeah, it's a shame that they don't work. I'd have so much fun with them. Oh, it'd be amazing. All right, well, next thing on the list is this guy right here, and this is the Mine Factory Reloaded Chunk Loader. Now, I want to show this guy off because it is crazy. Chunk. Okay. So we got the chunk loader here, and this is what it takes to make it. Plastic sheets, easy peasy. Electrum ingots, easy. Redstone conductance coil, easy as long as you have the electrum. Right, that's electrum? Yes, that's electrum. But you need two tesseracts, a tesseract frame, and a resonant energy cell. And that is why I'm missing all the ferrous ore there. Because you pulverize the ferrous ore and you get the fer pulverized ferrous and um, pulverized shiny dust. You know, the, the, the shiny stuff that you have to use to combine to make all of the uh, 
you know, these guys, the Enderim ingots. Uh, Enderim blend. Yeah, you need the pulverized shiny metal and pulverized tin. Well, tin's easy. Pulverized shiny metal, not so much. Um, that's still a slight problem. But yeah, these chunk loaders are insanely expensive to make, and they appear to be insanely expensive to run. Ooh, it flattened out. Awesome. Okay, so I'm not 100% sure how this chunk loader works. I did do some research on this thing, and I haven't figured it out. Um, looked it up on the wiki, the FTB wiki. Uh, doesn't have a page for the Mine Factory Reloaded Chunk Loader. Uh, the Techit wiki doesn't have the chunk loader at all. I think it might be a wrong version. Uh, the, 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 the Minecraft forum page for it, probably the official page, doesn't have any information at all. Maybe in the, the videos that were on there, but I didn't watch any of them. Um, and probably not, actually. Uh, so I'm kind of guessing at how this thing works. All right, so as you can see, I have the chunk loader radius set to four. Now this is adaptable which is really kind of cool. And if we hit F9, we can see our chunk markers here. All right, so I see this as two possibilities. One, the chunk loader counts this chunk as chunk number one. So this would be one, that would be two. This would be one, that would be two. Since we're dealing with radius, we're dealing with one direction. So that would be one, two, three, and then four, which is as far out as I've built so far. Okay, and I've got plenty of space in this area. So I might have a four by four, or er, er, no. That'd be one, two, three, four. So that'd be seven by seven. I might have a seven by seven area to deal with. Or this thing counts this chunk as chunk zero. And that actually kind of does make sense to me, um, mostly because this is a computer as much as we like to think of it as just a game and something to have fun this is a computer and computers start counting at zero so if this is chunk zero that means that that's chunk one that's chunk two where i've finished building is chunk three and that means i even have a bigger area to go with which would be a nine by nine chunk area i'm not 100 percent sure how that works so i just left it at four and i guess i can test that out later uh, but yeah, then it would go off pretty far in that direction, in that direction, and that direction. So I have this huge area to build in. Now, this thing does require power, and that's why this Tesseract is here, and it's receiving energy. That is from another glitch generator that I created over here. Uh, basically, same design as that one. And it's connected into the Tesseract here, and that's all it does. It just sends energy to the chunk loader and nothing else. Why did I build it over there? Not 100% sure, but that's what I did. Um, and I picked this chunk right here to put it in because it's the central chunk. If we go over to the other side of that, you know, to the far side of the spawner over here, that's where I started counting, and then I stopped counting over there at the laser drill. So this is the central chunk for, the, for my build area, so that's where I picked here. Um, now, how this thing uses power confuses the hell out of me. Okay, so if we look at the energy usage right now, we can, or the energy storage, we can see it's going up. So I qualify this as a good thing that it's working. Not sure. Not 100% sure at all. Haven't tested it yet um, because I heard that it crashes servers. So I backed up the server, started it up, put down the chunk loader, uh, which, ooh, this is a neat thing that I figured out too. And this is probably true for all Mine Factory Reloaded things. Uh, you know how if you take one of these, like the the ener redstone energy cells, see how it has 10 million? If you shift right click with the crescent hammer and then put it back down again. Oh, it's pointing the wrong direction. Hang on, I'll let me fix that. Boop. But it still has the 10 million uh, RF and it keeps all of your settings. The Mine Factory Reloaded stuff does that too, or at least the chunk loader does. So if we can look in here, we can see I have a whole crap ton of energy stored, and I'm set to the four chunks. If I pop that, you know, it doesn't say anything. If I hold shift, it doesn't actually say anything, but I put it back down and look in there. It's still set to four, and it still has all that power. I didn't know that. 
I th- uh, when I popped this thing after I read that it was those crashing servers, let's get rid of these chunk borders. Uh, yeah, uh, after I read that it was crashing servers, I popped it fairly quickly because I'm like, I don't want this crashing my server without a backup. So I popped it, shut down the server, backed it up, started put the chunk loader back in. Um, anyway, so the chunk loader draws more power based on the radius. And the energy draw, I'm not sure what it actually means. This is why I was actually looking it up, trying to find the wiki and all that crap. I can't figure it out. Um, this thing started about 8,000, between 8,000 and 9,000 RF. And I'm like, 8,000, 9,000, that's actually pretty good. Uh, this was before I actually started pumping power into it. This was before the Tesseract was even there. It was saying somewhere around like 8,500 or something like that. We're going to go with 8,500. I don't remember the actual number, so I'm just going to say that. Uh, so it was saying like 8,500 RF. And I'm like, 8,500? Well, I can do that. Uh, that thing outputs 20,000 RF per tick. So this will work great. And then I have plenty of space to expand if I need it. So I plugged in the Tesseract. I set it to do this thing. And then I looked at this thing, and it was over 9,000. I did not mean to make that joke. I'm sorry. Uh, and it was rising. As this was going up, this was going up as well, the energy draw. And I'm like, Ugh, what does that mean? Does that mean that uh, this thing's just building up to it or something, and it's going to start drawing more and more power? Or is it that the longer it runs, the more power it draws to keep running? Um, so the power requirements for this thing would be exponential, if I'm using that term correctly, and I think I am. Um, and this confuses the hell out of me too, this red bar here. Okay, so let's take a look at this real quick. We have hundred thousands million, so two billion, 147 million RF that it can store. I'm up to, let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three. 486 million. Okay, so I'm about uh, 20%? No. Yes, 20% of the max storage. But I don't see a red bar down here at all. Nothing. I also don't see this thing doing anything or the idle thing doing anything. So I'm not 100% sure what all this means. I'm going to let this thing run. I'm going to see what happens when it maxes out. Um, and God only knows what the fluid storage is for. I have no idea. Seriously, the, the, there's no information on this freaking chunk loader like anywhere. Um, I, as I was poking around, I found other people asking the same exact thing. It's like, can we get information on the chunk loader? And there just isn't any out there, and it drives me insane. Um, I mean, I love these mods. I just really, really, really wish the mod makers would put out information. Seriously, some of them do, like the uh, advanced genetics that I did over there. They have a really nice wiki, really, really fancy. I really, really like it. But, like, the Mind Factory wiki is a bit limited. The Project Red wiki is a bit limited. Actually, you know what? Let me rephrase that. There is no Mind Factory uh, reloaded wiki. I was using the FTB wiki and the Tekkit wiki, and both of them are incomplete or just out of date horribly horribly out of date so yeah it's also very very confusing and i really wish i had more information on this stuff <sighs> but i do like this i am actually kind of impressed at how f how much i have done uh with all of this i'm quite shocked i didn't i did not expect to get this far and with all of the stuff that I've made, I know I can get significantly farther. Uh, just using the stuff I have now in a different way, I could probably double the number of items we have in the affinity lockers. Probably. Not sure. Uh, and if we could get uh, the... Uh, hmm. Yeah, I just had another idea. I do that a lot. I'll be thinking of one thing, and then all of a sudden, something else will pop into my head. I just had an idea that we could do some pretty impressive stuff and get even more things infinitely. Um, yeah, so fun, fun, fun stuff.
Woohoo. Okay, so before I head off, um, and I know I'm at the 25 minute mark here, and I usually try to cut it off about 30, uh, but I am going to do one more thing here because, well, that's what it's for. It's quest for creative. So let's do something interesting here. Okay, so get a bunch of autonomous activators. Uh, don't need those. Um, might need some item ducts. Actually, the Project Red Pipes would probably be wiser. Um, anyways, so let's get a vacuum hopper. We'll just do one vacuum hopper for right now. Uh, let's put down some reinforced chests. Yeah, let's get some pipage. This is one thing that I have not tested yet. Uh, I did not test this in my creative world like I normally would. So I'm kind of winging it here. All right, so we have Tree Beard here. And as you can see, he has this area pretty much overgrown. Yeah. So I tested this a little while ago where I cleaned out everything beyond the grass just to see what would happen. And it regrew. All the grass regrew. So I'm like, oh, I have an idea now. So what I'm going to do, one, two, three, four. Oh, too high. I don't know if this is going to work. Like I said, I haven't tested this yet. But I figured this concept is nice and easy. Can I get you to flip upside down? No, upside down. I think it already did, didn't it? There it goes. Now it's upside down. So I just have to hit these twice, and they'll flip upside down. And then I'm going to do this again. Woo. And you might be confused as to what I'm doing, but trust me, I do know what I'm doing. As much as it would seem otherwise. And I wouldn't blame you if you thought I, I didn't, because most of the time I don't. All right, so now we have all of these upside down, or pointing down anyways. And then we can switch these, so instead of saying left click, we hit right click. Is this... Yeah, the grass comes out the whole way. So we right click. And you heard something pop there. So now there's no grass underneath that one particular block. So let's switch all of these to left click. Pop, pop, pop. I'm trying to do this quickly because I don't want to be editing things. Though I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm thinking pretty solidly. I guess I'm picking just the right type, the right time. All right, so as we can see, uh, we have the grass popped, but it didn't pick up anything. Oh, and something just grew and popped again. So this is a good, good sign. Uh, so what I was going to do, I might have to put two of these down, is use the vacuum hoppers. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to put another one down uh, just for that side. Um, hmm. I'm going to have to put a couple down considering how far these things don't pull from. I'm not 100% sure. Let's pop this real quick. Come on, there we go. All right, if I put you here, will it pull from over there? No, it will not. Uh, what if I do this? What if I put the vacuum hopper there? You will pull from there. So if I put one vacuum hopper there, and one vacuum hopper here. That should be enough in theory, right? One would think that should work. All right, let, let us do that. Um, yes, we want that as output. Let's go make another vacuum hopper. They're relatively easy to make, right? Hopper. Vacuum hopper takes a hopper, an obsidian, and an ender pearl. Oh, what luck. I have one ender pearl left. <laughs> I had stacks, like eight stacks of ender pearls, and I used them all to make uh, those generators over there and the tesseracts. So yeah, I ran out of like everything. Um, though, I mean, they're easy to get. I haven't quite figured out how to get them infinitely. I mean, I can uh, just, I mean, go into the end and build an ender grinder. Uh, an ender ender as it were i mean they're the concept is easy but uh i don't know how to do it 
without me being there because that's part of it. It's I'd have to be there to do it. Um, make you go away. Let's see. Oh, thank you. Yep, that'll work. Okay, and then we get some pipage. Put down our pipage here. Now, this is not going to be automatic. At least I don't think so. Um, so let's put down our chest and find out. No, this is not automatic. It will not output automatically. We have to pull out of the item hoppers. Uh, no, the vacuum hoppers, not the item hoppers. So I need pneumatic servos. So, but I mean, it's... At this point, it's fairly straightforward what I'm doing here. Though there is one part, oops, that you might be a little bit confused as to why I'm doing it. That worked. And I just set you to red. And that is, why do I have the impulse item ducts going to both sides of the chest? Well, in this case, probably no reason whatsoever. Uh, but I found... I think it's, I know it's with the vanilla pipes, or with the vanilla chests. Uh, apparently, it's not the same with the reinforced chests. But with the vanilla chest, what it would do is, uh, you put the pipe on one side, it would be in the top of the inventory. You put the pipe on the other side, it would be in the bottom of the inventory. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? This, right here, is a perfect example. The pulverizer here connected into this chest. This is where I output all of my stuff. Okay, now if I organize this real quick, okay, so we see we have a little over three rows. So this would be one chest, this would be the double chest. Now if I take something and pulverize it, like if I go over here and get, uh, what could I use, what could I use, what could I use, eh, whatever. Let's just pulverize some iron real quick, just, just as an example. Plop, plop. We'll throw some iron in there to pulverize and we will see the iron stays put so it just stays right there but we can see that the configuration is telling that the output should go into this chest but it's not doing anything if I move the stuff down here nothing happens but if I do this the iron comes out so this pulverizer will only put output to half of the chest that's why I had all of the pulverized obsidian at the bottom. Um, I'll put you back up where you're supposed to go. Uh, let's organize you real quick. Okay. Uh, because I can just basically do this real quick. And then just shift click everything on up in there. Boop. And there I have all my pulverized obsidian. And I use a lot of pulverized obsidian to make uh, reinforced glass which is used for a bunch of things. But yeah, uh, that is why, bouncy, I have the input on both sides of the chest. Um, because if one side of the chest filled, the other side would take over. And I'm even getting eggs. Eh, whatever. Uh, I have no idea how well this will work, but it is in the chunk loader area, right? Should be. Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, let's, let's assume on the low side. So let's assume that that chunk is one. So one, two, three, and then four out here. So yes, it is just inside the chunk loaded area. So that'll work. Uh, also it says radius and radius in Minecraft is a little weird. Um, it could mean that it's a circular radius it could also mean it's a square radius. So I'm not 100% sure about that either. Like I said, it's not detailed. There's, there's, not a, there's no information on the fracking chunk loader. And I'm kind of disappointed about that. Alrighty! Um, there is one more thing I want to say, and this will be a special little thing for all of you who actually managed to stick around for the end of the episode, though... I think my fans, the people that actually watch my videos, are actually pretty loyal, unlike the other 600 and some odd 
people that subscribe and don't watch my videos. Um, I, I, I'm thinking of this uh, because I have a small problem with talking and doing things all at the same time. It's like two outputs, doing one thing but not talking about it, but talking about something else entirely. Um, like you see on the really good Let's Players, uh, the people that uh, they build, like uh, BOO, Vintage Beef, Good, those kind of people, they'll build one thing and talk about something else entirely. I can't do that. That's why I'm more of a technical kind of Let's Player, where I build things, and I showed you guys how to build things. I do how-tos, I do tutorials, I do learning, and that kind of thing, is because I can talk about the same thing that I'm doing, but I can't talk about something completely different. However, there's plenty, plenty of things I want to talk about, and I want to hear you guys' opinions on it. And I have, you know, I mean, I get 30 views for my videos in, like, a day, which is really good. I'm really thankful for that. Um, but I only have, like, 20 people subscribed or following me on G+. Um, now, I don't know if that means that you watch my G+, you just don't want a G+, account, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. Um, and you might be asking, why do I have G+. Uh, I have G+, because Twitter is too small. I like talking as I'm going on to, uh, yeah, I'm going into minute 37 coming up here soon. I like talking. I like being thorough in what I say. I like being detailed. I don't like ambiguity in my statements. I'm not good at it, but I try my hardest. But that means that I type a lot. I make long comments. And 140 characters is just not enough for me. 140 characters cannot contain me. And I don't want to be one of those people that tweets 4, 5, 6, 12, 1,350 times to get one idea across. So I just throw it all into Google where I haven't reached the maximum limit yet. I know there is one. I just have no idea what it is, and I have come nowhere near it. Uh, so I throw things up on Google Plus because it's bigger. I don't do things on Facebook because I hate Facebook. I hate the concept of Facebook in this respect. Um, like Twitter is awesome because you can follow me. G plus is awesome because you can follow me. Facebook, I have to friend you. I do. Well, what if I'm not there to friend you at the time? Well, then you're missing out on things, you, but you can follow me instantly on G plus or Twitter. So, I mean, Facebook is great. Well, no, Personally, I despise Facebook, but I understand the concept of Facebook, and the concept of Facebook is great for friends and relatives and that kind of thing. It is not great for our type of interaction. It's, okay, we're not friends per se, um, but I love you all, by the way. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's our, our relationship is different, and it's not suited for Facebook. It's great for G+, and it's great for Twitter. That's why most YouTubers do Twitter. I don't because I think Twitter is just too short, not detailed enough. Alrighty. Uh, is there anything else I want to do, want to say? Did I say the special thing? Um, yeah, I, that's actually how I got started in the G+, thing. I told you I'm medicated. I, my brain's not working like it should. Uh, there's, there is one thing that I'm thinking about doing that I want to do because not many people follow me on G+, uh, and I do want to get opinions, my opinions, my ideas out there. Uh, so I'm thinking about doing a vlog, and I don't mean like I'm running around building things in Minecraft-type vlog. As I explained, I can't do that. I'm actually talking about a face cam blog, basically where I have the camera sitting on my TV, well, my monitor, TV, monitor, same thing for me, and I'm actually talking to you guys. That way I can use my hands to talk. I, you can see my reactions. You can see my face. You can see my emotions. And you can tell if I'm joking or not, usually. Uh, not as easy to tell just through voice and what little one hand that can only punch can do. Um, so I'm thinking about that. However, I am... Uh, resistant to showing my face on camera on the internet in general. I don't like cameras. I never have. 
Um, but uh, I am thinking about doing that. Uh, so I wanted to throw this out there and see what you guys thought of it um, and see what, see, you know, how you guys would feel about it. That would be, if I do that kind of stuff, it would be more intellectual style stuff where basically I just let my mind flow and see where it takes me. I do that a lot uh, talking to myself, actually. <laughs> I do. Um, so it, at first it would probably be a little disorganized, a little jumpy, but, I mean, that's that's how I think. Uh, I'd get better at it, just as I did with my Let's Play videos. I got significantly better at my Let's Play videos. I mean, you should see... Don't. Don't go and look at the earlier videos. Uh, unless you want to be horribly bored out of your skull and go, what the fuck was this guy thinking? Um, but, yeah. I, I, I'm sure I'll get better at it, but I wanted to see what uh, you guys thought about that idea. And, you know, see if you guys would stick around, because I know that uh, if I'm not doing the quest for creative, if I do something else, my views are, just aren't there. Um, so, and like I said, it's all about you guys. Um, it's all about making stuff that you want to see, because if you're not watching it, there, there's no point in me making it, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying the hell out of doing this myself. I, I really enjoy it, but the reason that I enjoy it is because you guys enjoy it. I don't know. I guess I'm weird that way. I might be weird that way. Um, I might just be like everybody else that way. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, that would probably be one of the topics I ramble on about in a vlog. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I do want to say this one thing before I cut it off, and this will be the last thing I have to say. Um, yesterday, I got a whole bunch of comments, and I really appreciate it. I just want to say that I really appreciate all the comments I got yesterday. Um because I got them all after I came back from the dentist and you know, I was in pain and that's just, that made me feel really happy. I, I'm really thankful for it. And uh, yeah, thank you. So I'm going to end the episode here before I ramble on any further and my, te my eyes tear up anymore. And I'm going to say to you guys, see you in the next episode. And as always keep playing the game and have fun.